We did tell you earlier on that there's uh, a report reaching us which indicates that Andrew Ba, the candidate of the All Progressive Congress APC for the November 6th governorship election in Anambra State, was indicted some years back for smuggling dollars to the US and pounds to the UK. He was actually a subject of a US investigation into advanced free fraud scheme known as 419 in Nigeria. This was according to the US government. He had previously been sworn in as governor of the state in 2007, but his election was nullified by the Supreme Court on the grounds that Peter Obi, the governor of the state, was yet to finish his fourth tenure. Uh, his four-year tenure, I beg your pardon. But what we're going to dig into this gentleman, because joining us to discuss this is Kunle Lawal, his executive director, Electoral College Nigeria. Thank you, Kunle, for joining us. It's, it's, it's very interesting when issues like this crop up and... I mean, it's also not uh, unusual when people are trying to run for office that dirt is being dug up on them. But in the case of Andrew Ba, he seems to have pending cases outside the UK, according to this report. It, it, it does make me wonder if political parties do like a background check before they allow people to run on their platforms. Should that be the basis of this conversation? You know, if we're going to look at this thing properly. Let's start with the Electoral Act. And within the Electoral Act, it states that any candidate that has been penned for any situation in a court of law, but as funny as our Electoral Act is, it leaves a lacuna on if you've been penned in a foreign country. So Andy Uba's case will now be argued from the position, as if lawyers were given the chance, to be argued for, from a position that he, he never was penned by a Nigerian court mm -hmm. or tribunal. And that's where they will come from. Now, INEC has this within the Electoral Act, which means political parties too must pay attention to it. But I think in the, in the whole big picture or in the scheme of things, where the problem actually lies is where we do not draw the line. If, because looking at Andy Uba, when, that, if, when this actually happened before 2007, and he served sometime preceding 2007 as a senator, and while he was serving, he already had this case lagging behind. And the CCT, that's the Code of Conduct Tribunal, of course has the mandate to remove an officer with such an issue. This has never been done in Nigeria. This has never happened. And I think the people are comfortable with it. And if you even look at how... Comfortable he, with it? How so? When I mean the people are comfortable with it, I'm talking of the representatives of the people. That's uh -huh. the legislature who mm -hmm. should actually make a move towards stopping all these actions. And even preceding his present run for governor, I believe the nomination form was 20 million naira and the uh, intention to run was 2.5, meaning he has spent 22.5 million. The existing present electoral act does not allow anyone running for, of course, governor, exceed the amount of 100, 100 million, if I'm correct. So he has taken 22.5 million out of his campaign money. Is anybody looking at what he has spent after that? We can't just come from a point where, okay, UK has said this. What of what he's even breaking in Nigeria? So the truth is that either the National Assembly is comfortable with this, the CCT also feels very comfortable because this is the modus of operandi of the average politician mm -hmm. in Nigeria. And that is where the real bone of problem comes. We don't need to start looking at foreign countries to start to help to tell us what exactly is going on in our country. But that seems to be the case. We never really pick up issues except it becomes an issue that the, either the UN is putting out a report or uh, Amnesty International or Transparency do you understand where I'm coming from? We never really follow these things. So, and that's why I'm saying, does this not call to question the entire process of our elections, the entire process of internal um, democracies within political parties? Does this not call to question INEC in itself for even allowing people like this to run in the first instance? You know what's amazing about the Electoral Act, and this is the most amazing thing? It states... Campaign funds should not exceed so so amount. It states a candidate cannot have an issue with the court, with the law, or with forgery, and especially fraud. It states that an aspirant cannot have those issues. Do you know what it doesn't state? Who persecutes it? So it's, it's, for me, our electoral act is rigged to tolerate such uh, issues and encumbrances to, to kind of leave a level playing field so that the... Alibaba and the 40 thieves can run within the system. Um, so now that we have the, like I said at the beginning, when it's close to elections or someone's running for office, dirt is being dug up either by the opposition 
or by people who really want to sanitize the system. But then the sensationalism plays out until the election's proper and then everybody goes back to sleep. Nobody really follows through. And just as the conversation we had previously about insecurity and terrorism and funders of terrorism, here we are again talking about there not being a wheel of sorts, a political wheel to deal with these issues, to even see if we can drive it to a conclusion of sorts. And now we're getting ready for 2023. There is an Electoral uh, Act bill that's still um, <laughs> on the floor of the National Assembly and we're hoping for a miracle of sorts. Um, and it seems more like we may not be carried along at the end of the day because we, we still haven't heard anything. The National Assembly has come back. They've resumed plenary. Uh, all we've heard is that uh, monies have been approved for Mr. President to take loans and, and all of that. But we've not really heard about how 2023 is going to play out uh, as it as concerns the Electoral uh, Act bill. So what hopes do we have that we can sanitize the electoral system? You're the, of the Electoral College. It's not enough for us to train young people. You're doing a great job, by the way, on, on how to be great leaders and all of that. But what about the system that is not sanitized? Okay, um, let's bust a little bubble here. Okay. The czars of politics in Nigeria understand one critical thing that I think the rest of us don't understand. They understand that the Nigerian people just understand that the entire Nigerian system is weighted on like a buffet. So what happens is while Mr. A is getting it off, let's give an example in this case, Andy Uba breaking the laws, everybody is comfortable because they know one day a Kunle Lawal will run for office and my friends will want contracts and they will, everybody else will be comfortable with it. So because we benefit, as much as we tend to turn it around, we benefit from the corrupt practices that actually exist within the systems. Because if you look at it, the delegates are us. The people transferring money or moving money around are us. We seem to be very comfortable with it. And because we've been comfortable with it, we cannot hold the system accountable. Because we know that it one day affect Kunle's uncle, that will one day become governor or affect Kunle and my friends will lose out in the national kick. So it's a clear buffet. So does that not mean that we're not ready to move forward as a country anytime soon? We're just paying lip service to it. Uh, we're just jaw drawing and we're not ready to act upon it. And, and when I say we, I'm not talking about just the government. I'm mm. not talking about the legislature. I'm not talking about the judiciary. I'm talking about Ooh. we the people. What stops, what stops the Anambra people? Uh, Andy Uba has a fraud case. What stops the Anambra people? We are not voting for Andy Uba because he has a fraud case and he wins zero votes in Anambra. It will send a message. Nobody else will attempt having a fraud case and going into the system. You can't rely on the political parties but who like are ready said, to But like you said, you also Ghana pointed to is our brother, is his time. Let him. Um, so it, it seems, like you said, the national kick scenario, we all take a piece of it. Uh, how do we even begin to change that mindset because it's not enough for us to say go and vote go and re-register get a voter's card come out and vote watch your votes get counted there's a lot of backroom work that needs I, to be done I, yes isn't I, it? I don't want to also hold the national orientation agency accountable but eventually i would have to hold them accountable on this matter this conversation the truth, always yes, comes this, up. yes the conversation always comes up and the truth is that the national assembly has sorry the national orientation agency has not put out enough information or let's say they've put out two percent of the information telling people go and vote your vote should count why should that be the only thing why are you not participating in primaries? Why are you not a delegate? Why are you not? We don't tell people these things. We don't even allow people to even know something as basic. And let me surprise you. I can tell you 94% of Nigerians do not know that the local government does not have immunity. <laughs> I'll say it for free on TV, but I know that they don't know that that exists. And most people check your constitution. That's what occurs. So the truth is, if we do not even understand the system, how then are we going to hold the system accountable? Who's, who's educating? And that's the thing. Do we wait for the National Orientation Agency who does not have impressed uh, to do anything? Or, I mean, who are not mobilized? Whether it's, it's the truth. They're not mobilized until it's close to election season, and then we start seeing those advertorials. When was the last time you saw an NOA advertorial on TV? Oh, well, they were very active during COVID. The COVID money was really going around. Well, that's COVID. And so, and so I'm saying, but then there are social responsibilities that people yes. need to be educated on, and we don't see that. So I really don't know, and I hate to be, you know, a pessimist, but I don't know if we are really ready for change. Unfortunately, 
that's the sad notes that we have to end this conversation on. Kumi Lawal is of the Electoral College Nigeria. Thank you very much for speaking it's with me. It's my pleasure. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. Uh, we'll take a short break now to hear if Nigerians are interested in knowing the sponsors of terrorism in the country. And after that, I will say good night. Very well, I would love to know them because of the so many bad things that is happening in Nigeria today. We are all living in fear here and there. So we need to know them. Knowing them, we expose them so that they may have the fear to avoid doing it or um, stop doing it entirely. Honestly, no, I'm not. And I'll say I'm not because I like a situation whereby I have a problem and then there's a situation for it. So if I'm knowing whoever is sponsoring these people, so what next? It's not like we've not seen tragedies that, you know, are bigger than this. And then we have a situation whereby nothing happens to the person. I mean, you have these people, you know them, they are seen, they are identified, but then nothing happens to them, they just go scot-free. Some of them even become, I don't know, more popular. Exactly. So, yeah, I take Well, as a Nigerian, I would love to know, and in the Constitution, is legal. Those who are sponsoring, they are also terrorists also. So it's good they should tell the Nigerians who they are and persecute them according to the law. Yes, I would like to know, but I don't, I don't think it's possible for somebody like me to know because I'm not in the position to know. Well, we want to say thank you to all of you who've been part of the conversation. I hope that you've enjoyed every bit of it, but I want to leave you with a word of advice. Uh, and I think it's very important. We need to go beyond just asking government for good governance. We also have to be good followers. You need to learn about your social responsibility as a Nigerian because you also have a responsibility to your country and you have to do right by it. I am Mary Anacorn. Have a good evening. Mm -hmm.